All right, praise God, people. Uh, listen, if you're watching this video, pause the video and go get your Bible. This will be an epic Bible study, I'm telling you. Test every drop of what I'm going to say, and I'm going to tell you the mystery revealed of the day of the rapture. Now, maybe I have the day, but that's not important, the actual day. I'm giving you the absolute theory of the rapture. I'm giving you the appointed time of the rapture, okay? So you've got to listen to this video. It's crucial. So pause it, get your Bible. If not, listen to it through, but then listen to it again with your Bible so you can go through it. Any serious Christian, serious watcher, serious watchman, you need to put this all together. I'm winging it just of all the stuff I've learned. This is the one thing I like about YouTube. I can make long videos. I don't have to do it in a three-minute TikTok or a three-minute clapper video. So praise God. If you have any questions, real questions, put them in the comment section. I'll answer every single one. Uh, Lord, bless this study in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, get over the double glasses. It doesn't matter. I got to be able to see. All right. <clears throat> Leviticus 23. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them concerning the Feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. I just remembered something. I got to write it down. Uh, okay, we'll get to that later. Listen, th this is why people say these are the feasts of the Jews. They're not the feasts of the Jews. They're the feasts of the Lord, the appointed times of of the Lord, listen, toward Israel. Did we Christians benefit from Passover, Christ dying on the cross? Absolutely we did. But he came for his people. His people rejected him. They were to do dress rehearsals, holy convocation. So when the real came, they were supposed to recognize it. That's what the appointed times of the Lord were. He had them doing dress rehearsal, dress rehearsal, all seven of them, dress rehearsal, dress rehearsal. Three times a year, you'll come up. Unleavened bread, Passover, Pentecost, Shavuot, and then tabernacles, you know, trumpets, Yom Kippur, tabernacles, they got to go up to Jerusalem again. So they are to the Jews. This is why the rapture, is not going to happen on one of those days. I believed it the whole time. For the last six years, I thought it would be one of the seven feasts. Everybody thought it was Feast of Trumpets. If you stay with me on this video, I will show you an amazing discovery of why it won't be Feast of Trumpets. But, and that's what I just wrote down. It's incredible the tribulation is going to start this Feast of Trumpets. I have proof from the Bible. Now, it makes sense on the surface anyway. People are already saying it. I get it. But now I got proof from the Bible that it absolutely is going to be Feast of Trumpets starts the tribulation this year. We will be raptured before that starts, okay? So, God spoke to Moses, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, do you see, these are God's appointed times to Israel. It's not their feasts, it's God's appointed times, but it's to them. I always miss that. This is why the rapture is not on one of the seven, but it still is an appointed time. Praise God, let's go. Okay. Scotty Clark, that knucklehead, 
God bless him. Six years ago, he he taught. Listen, Scotty Clark, just for the record, he taught me that the rapture was a birth. Nobody really knew that that the rapture was a birth. We knew what the rapture was. We're going to disappear. We're going to be changed. You know the whole thing. Nobody ever looked at it as a birth, as far as I knew. That doesn't mean he's the first person ever to say it, because in some old Bibles and the commentaries, you know, people reference uh, Revelation 12.5 as a birth. But look, I want to take the time, a little bit of time, to show you these things, okay? So, I mean, I got so many scriptures to go to. When he said it was a birth, it, it just, it blew me away. I thought, man, he, he's right. You know, you look into it, you test it, and turns out he was right. The rapture is a birth. So when we try to compare the rapture to a Galilean wedding, you know, the bridegroom's coming back, the bride's got to get ready, she doesn't know. Yeah, it applies somewhat, but think about this. Jesus said in John 3, 3, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. That was literal. Born again is the rapture. It's the birth, being born again. So I, I just had this revelation thought right now, right now in real time before I fired up this video. Jesus cannot marry us until we are like him. Do you get that? So what comes first? Our wedding that we're waiting for, we're the bride, or the birth? The birth has to come first. Do you get that? Think about that. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Only when we are like Christ, he's the head, we're the body, we have to become like him. First John 3, 2, when we see him, we will be like him. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we will be changed. The dead are corruption. Their bodies have decayed. They're, they're, they're gone. They're dust. So the corruption will put on incorruption when the dead in Christ rise first. But the mortal, we're alive, will put on immortality. So that's a reference to the dead and the alive and remain in 1 Corinthians 15. Okay, so we cannot marry the Lord. Can we marry the Lord right now in our sinful state? Yeah, we're saved by grace through faith. We're, we're saved, but we're still sinners. We cannot marry him until we become like him. So the birth is first. And listen, I wasn't even gonna go there, but Ecclesiastes, uh, the song, you know, everything, there's a season, there's a time for this, a time for that, a time for this, a time for that killing, healing, the whole thing, Ecclesiastes 3, the birds made a song about it. The very first one is, there is a time to be born. That's the first one. So think about that. Cool. God has it all perfect. Now listen, when Scotty Clark taught this, you know, Scotty Clark taught me Revelation 12, 5. He taught me 1 Corinthians 15, 8. And then he, he taught me about the 144,000, by the way, which was another gold nugget. Now, unfortunately, he's went off the rails. He's hyper dispensation, you know, all that. But this ain't about him. I just want to give him credit. This is where I learned it. Now, if you go to your Bible in your commentaries, it, it, you'll, you'll laugh. Everybody says this is Christ. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Well, that's Jesus. He's going to rule in the millennium. And her child, her child was caught up to God and to his throne. That's the word harpazo. That's our rapture. Everybody knows this by now. It's a birth. Her child was caught up to God. Jesus was not caught up to God. So when you read your commentaries and they say, oh, this is a reference to Christ, 
He wasn't caught up as a child. He ascended after he rose from the dead. He wasn't snatched away from danger. He was in no danger. This is the son of God and his glorified body, the firstborn from the dead, ascending up to his father, to the right hand of his father. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, 8, and I'll try to speed it up and move it along, but you gotta stay with me. We're gonna cover ground. It'll blow your mind. All right, 1 Corinthians, let me go to 2 Corinthians 12, 2 through 4 real quick. And th this was amazing. Paul said, I knew a man, he's talking about himself, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows such a one caught up to the third heaven. He was caught up to the throne of God. Same word, harpazo. Paul was raptured in a vision. He doesn't even know if it was like a dream or God really took his body up there. He doesn't know. He said, God knows. This is how powerful the vision was. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knows. I didn't repeat myself, that's verse three. He said it again. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Paul couldn't even talk about what he saw. This is an amazing thing. He was harpazoed up into the third heaven. That's God's heaven. That's where God's throne is, up in paradise. Now go back to 1 Corinthians 15, 8. So Paul goes through the whole list. He was seen of Cephas, then of the 12. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. This is after his resurrection of whom the greater part remain to this present, but some are fallen asleep, some have died. And after that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, verse eight. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. Born prematurely. The rapture is a birth. He's talking about when he was caught up to heaven. He was seen of me when I was harpazoed prematurely. Clearly tells us the rapture is a birth, okay? And I'm, I'm hoping you already know this. Praise God, I'm just showing you. Isaiah 66, a, a, another amazing passage. I got I got all these bookmarks, so hopefully this goes good. Isaiah 66, before she travailed, 66 verse 7, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. The same word in Revelation 12, 5, a man child. That's us. That's the body of Christ being born again. But before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came. That is a pre-tribulation rapture. You cannot deny a pre-tribulation rapture. Just forget about it. It's nonsense to think it's mid-trib, post-trib, pre-wrath, anything else but pre-trib. 100%, it's right there. Okay. But again, it's a birth. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? That's our birth. That's the rapture. Or shall a nation be born at once? You know, I think that's a reference to Israel becoming a nation in one day, 1948. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Her children are gonna be everybody who gets saved in the tribulation will technically be the children of Zion, Jerusalem, the Jews, Israel. That's what it means. But we're first, we break the womb. Listen, that's the greatest revelation of our time is that we're breaking the womb 
of barren Jerusalem. Why do you think God gave us all the barren women? Listen, God started with Abraham and he said, I'm gonna make of you a great nation. It's gonna be like the dust of the earth. Can you number that, Abraham? No, you can't. Look at the stars, Abraham. Can you number them? No, you can't. Your seed's gonna be like the stars in the heaven. Well, the Christians, the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, we are the stars up in the heavenly places. The dust of the earth are the earth dwellers, the Jews that will be saved and reproduced throughout all eternity. This is why it's gonna be a great nation. But think, why did God do this? So in this line that God created to bring in Messiah, to bring in Jesus, all the women were barren. The three matriarchs were barren. Sarah was barren. Uh, Rebecca was barren. Rachel was barren. Why do you think God did that? He was trying to point us to the barren women. And this is what led me into this whole study, this amazingness. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself there, but praise God, that is the truth. So after she gives birth to us, she'll have more children. All the tribulation saints are her children. The remnant are her children. And look, that's Revelation 12. When that Revelation 12, 13, it says, when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he was wroth and he went after the woman which delivered the man child. So went after mother Jerusalem, the Jews who delivered us, the firstborn out of the womb. Oh, praise God, which means the firstborn always gets a double portion, a double blessing, a double inheritance. We get that in the Shunammite story, 2 Kings 4. Shunammite means double resting place. Do you know what double resting place means? It means during the millennium, the glorified saints, the bride of Christ, the wife of Jesus, we get to go up into heaven, into New Jerusalem, and then we get to come back down to earth at will. We have a double resting place. We get heaven, we get earth. The Jews can't do that. When they enter the kingdom of God, the millennium, they will live on earth. They don't have glorified bodies. Only the ones with glorified bodies get the double resting place because we were the firstborn that broke the womb we get the double portion. God, all glory to God. Are you listening to this? This is amazing. Let me just finish this off. Before she travailed, she brought forth, her pain came. She was delivered of a man child. That's pre-trib. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? You bet it. You better believe it will. Or shall a nation be born at once? You better believe it will. For as soon as Zion travailed, listen, as soon as the tribulation started, she brought forth her children, plural. Just like I told you. Verse nine, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth, says the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, says your God? God's not gonna shut the womb. We know we're in the season. We know this is the time. God is bringing us forth. All the signs prove it. He's not going to shut the womb. He's going to do the opposite. Open the womb. We're going to break the womb as the firstborn. I'm going to prove it to you. Stay with me. All right. Here's one we forgot about. This, this verse was big back when the Revelation 12 sign was going. All right. Micah chapter 5. Okay, th this is so gold. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do one through three. Now gather yourself in troops. O daughter of troops, he has laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. But you, Bethlehem of Frata, Though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me, that is to be ruler, wait, yet out of you shall he come forth to me, both capital, he and me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth 
have been from old, from everlasting, from eternity past. This is Jesus. He was born in Bethlehem. We read Micah 5, 2, every Christmas story. It's in there, born in Bethlehem. But what everybody misses is Micah 5, 3. Now, Micah 5, 2 is the birth of Christ. Listen to this. Therefore, will he give them up, give Israel up, until the time that she which travails has brought forth. He's going to give them up until the time that she which travails has brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. Think of that. When we're raptured, up until that time when she which travails has brought forth, she brings us forth, then he goes back to the remnant of his brethren, shall return to the children of Israel. He will keep the remnant. So if you think about Micah 5, 2 and 5, 3, Micah 5, 2, he's born in Bethlehem. They reject him. In AD 70, the temple's destroyed. God disperses them. That's Luke 21, 24. He said, I'll drive you out of the land. You'll be scattered across the globe. And it's all through Ezekiel in the Old Testament. God said, I'm gonna scatter you. I'm gonna regather you. So there it is. It, listen, that's our birth. She which travails has brought forth. So if you think about it, it's back-to-back -back births. Christ was born in Bethlehem, and then verse 3 is our birth, and then he turns his attention back to the Jews. Isn't that amazing? That's back-to-back -back births right there in Micah 5, 2 and 3. Praise God. I just want to make sure I didn't leave nothing out. So his birth, our birth, AD 70, he gave them up. Therefore, will he give them up? When did he give them up? A.D. 70, dispersed, temple destroyed. It, it's the church age. He gave them up. It's the parentheses in between the 69th and 70th week. Praise God. It's, it, this is amazing. Okay. So let me finish this off. Isaiah 54. Th this was really the first part of the revelation that I got when, when I started doing all this. So I'm showing you that the rapture is a birth. You should already know that by now. Praise God. We have to be born again or we cannot marry the Lord. We have to be like him. Isaiah 54. Sing, O barren. God had us looking at barren women. Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and then, you know, Hannah, the whole thing, Samson's mother, John the Baptist's mother. It, it was the Shunammite woman. Sing, O barren, you that did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you that did not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. God married Israel. We went through all that. They did not produce. They were into adultery, harlotry, um, idolatry, the whole thing. They committed this. They they had Romans 4, I forget what it is, 13 or 4. They had the oracles of God. They were supposed to be the light on the hill leading the Gentiles to the one and only true God. They didn't do it. They failed. They produced no children. God said, sing, O barren, you that did not bear, break forth into singing. Why? Why do you break forth into singing? Because you just had your first child, us, the rapture. Unbelievable. This is awesome. Okay. With child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitations. Spare not, lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes 
Build bigger tents. You're about to have a lot of children. For you shall break forth on the right hand and on the left and your seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. Women that were barren were ashamed. That was the only job they had back then. Get married and give their husband a son. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. Neither be you confounded, for you shall not be put to shame. For you shall forget the shame of your youth and shall not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. She was a widow. God divorced her. You know, they were dead to God at one point. God's bringing them back. Verse 5, Isaiah 54, 5. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and your redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord has called you as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth, married her back young, right out of Egypt, when you were refused, says your God." For a small moment have I forsaken you, but with great mercies will I gather you. In a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on you. And that's even Psalm 130. Says the Lord, your Redeemer. Ah, oh, praise God. Listen. Read that whole chapter. I, I can't go too long on this video, so praise God for that. That's the birth. Now you say, well, how do you know that's our birth? How, is it, how do you know that's the rapture birth? Excellent question. Excellent question. Galatians 4, gold, monumental gold. I just want to make sure I, I'm doing everything I wrote down here, trying to... Oh, praise God. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. Galatians 4. I'm going to start with 22. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. Pay attention. The one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. But he of the free woman was by promise. Prophecy. Promise. God promised Abraham a great nation. It had to start with one son. He didn't have any sons. Ishmael was the bondwoman. This is what it's talking about, of the flesh. Sarah said, oh, I can't have a baby. Here's Hagar, take her. That wasn't God's plan. God said, I promised you. Is, is anything too hard for me? And we're getting ahead of ourselves. That's Genesis 18, 14. Oh, praise God. Look at this. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. Verse 24, which things are an allegory? It's an allegory. God's telling you. It's typology. This is all typology. For these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, the whole Mount Sinai, Moses up, down. You know who did that which leads to bondage is Hagar. So the whole Mount Sinai scenario led to bondage. The law put them in bondage. They committed adultery immediately with the golden calf. That's all no good. It's of the flesh. It's of Hagar. Look what God says, verse 25. For this Hagar is, is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answers to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. So all the false children that they produced from the bondwoman, the slave, Hagar, that's the whole Mount Sinai. So what's the opposite or what's the contrast? Verse 26, but Jerusalem, which is above but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Verse 27 is quoting what we just read, Isaiah 54, 1. 
For it is written, Rejoice, you barren that bear not. Break forth and cry, you that travail not. For the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. Verse 28, Paul talking. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. We're Isaac, not Ishmael, not Hagar. We're the children of prophecy, of the promise. Praise God, I hope you got that. Ask questions if you don't. Now, shift to Genesis 18, 14. Was there anything special about Isaac's birth? I don't know, let's see. And listen, I gotta, I gotta set this up a little bit. Abraham was called out at 75 years old. He was called out when he was 75. It says it right in the Bible, clear. Israel's 75 years old right now. Think about that. Um, the One of the words that are involved was used 75 times. I think it's the time of life, okay? Abraham laughed. Everybody talks about Sarah laughing at God. Abraham laughed. Genesis 17, 17, this is comedy, I'm telling you. I'll back it up. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, he's 99, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be you perfect, blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying. So God does all this talking and then Abraham chimes in in verse 17. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. He laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born to him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is 90 years old bear? And Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Abraham still didn't get it. He's laughing. He's like, Lord, you promised me a great nation. You called me out when I was 75. I've been living in tents in the desert, wandering around. I'm 99 now. You haven't given me one child. This is crazy. <laughs> That's what he said. So God said, Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son indeed, and you shall call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant with the seed after him. That's us people. Praise God. And listen, verse 20, he says, don't worry about Ishmael. I'm going to bless him. 12 princes will come from him, the whole thing. Verse 21, but my covenant will I establish with Isaac which Sarah shall bear to you at this set time in the next year. God said, it is a moed, an appointed time in the next year that God visited him here. This is so crucial. Now you go to Genesis 18, 1. And the Lord appeared to him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day summertime, heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, my Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, pass not away. Listen, this is three months later. Three months later, God appeared to him again. Abraham's excited. Let me make a meal for you. Let me wash your feet. They let him. They ate the meal. This is Jesus and two angels, you know, looking like men and an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. This is amazing, but it's three months later, okay? Verse 10, and he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life, and lo, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Verse 14, now I'll read 13. And the Lord said to Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Verse 14, is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed? An appointed time, a moed, not one of the seven of Leviticus 23. This is its own own day. This is the rapture day. This is when the son of promise was born. 
Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. I will return to you according to the time of life at the time appointed. This is a moe, this is an appointed time of God in the time of life. So when you do a basic study of all that, the time of life can mean springtime, after winter, when things blossom, the flowers shoot up, the, the gardens start to get going. Flowing water, it means. It also means summer. Summer is the time of life. Everything's producing crops that produce later in the summer, dates, figs, um, grapes, the whole thing. So I've been trying to find this time of life. So are we in the season and this day is only known by God and we're going to be appointed or can we find it? That's the question with this time of life. But I just want to finish the story off. So Sarah denied that she laughed and she was afraid and he said, nay, but you did laugh. But then God changes the subject. Sarah didn't get punished for that, nothing like that. And the men rose up from there and looked toward Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring him on the way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? God came, got a meal with Abraham, delivered the message about the prophecy. He said in 17, at this time next year, you'll have a son. Three months later, he said, you're going to have a son at the appointed time in the time of life. So now he's telling Abraham his plan. You know this story. Abraham, Abraham said, one more time, can I make a request? One more time, can I make a request? If there's 10 righteous in Sodom, will you destroy it? God said, I won't destroy it if there's 10. The story ends there. Abraham goes back home. He's in such a good mood. He's 99 and he has two appearances of God within three months. God showed him his plan about Sodom. Abraham thinks he thwarted the mission to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because he thought, man, there must be 10 people. God said he won't destroy it if there's 10. So Abraham went home in a good mood. Guess what he did? He had relations with Sarah, and that's when she conceived. And nine months later, he was born at the appointed time in the time of life, which is also our birth. Praise God. So anyway, when I'm studying all this out, all the barren women, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, uh, Hannah, who had Sam or Samuel, Samson's mother was five, um, John the Baptist's mother, Elizabeth, and then the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings 4. So I can't do this whole thing. This video is getting long. Praise God. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem. There was a great woman. We're a great pearl of great price. This is a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat bread. Three times it uses the phrase, it fell on a day. And it fell on a day, verse 11, and it fell on a day that he came there and he turned into the chamber and lay there. It fell on a day, I believe is the set time in the time of life. We will go into our wedding chamber and we will lay on our beds, Isaiah 57, one and two. I don't have time to go there. Please look it up. We go up, we walk around in our uprightness and we lay on our beds and rest. This is, this is the rapture after we're up there. Okay, now 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 and 17 are the rapture verses. For the, Lord descend, for the Lord himself will descend with a shout, with the voice of the archangel. Okay, look at this. 2 Kings 4, 16 and 17. I don't know if that's a coincidence, but praise God. Okay, so this woman has no son. She's barren, which immediately draws our attention, like I said, to the barren women. So Elisha said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, say now to her, behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for you? You took care of me. You built me a little shelter on your house. Would you be spoken of for the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, 
I dwell among my own people. She didn't ask him for nothing. She said, I'm content. I'm living with my people in my village. No problem. Well, God knew the heart. And listen, that's how we get saved. We're chosen in eternity past. We don't seek God. He sought us. So she was saying, I'm content. And he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, verily, she has no child and her husband is old. And by the way, that, that Abraham, Sarah, she was past childbearing age. So God had to make her female parts supernaturally go back in business. So that son of promise did have some supernatural effect to it because look, he's 100, she's 90, the whole thing. Verily, she has no child and her husband is old. And he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door, verse 16, and he said, about this season, the word about and season is both the same word. It's moed, at the appointed time. About this season, according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And she said, nay, my Lord, you man of God, do not lie to your handmaid. So deep down, she wanted that son. And of course, God knew it. And the woman conceived and bore a son at the season, at the moed, at the appointed time that Elisha had said to her, according to the time of life. There's only four references in the whole Bible. Two for Isaac, two for the Shunammite woman called in the time of life. Both appointed times in the time of life. This is the rapture. We are tied to both of these. Shunammite is tied to Isaac. We are tied to both. Now listen, long story short, it says, and when, the and when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, the reapers, the reapers, the harvest is still going. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to the, the servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him, he brought him to his mother. He sat on her knees until noon, and then he died. The boy died. So this whole story, I don't have time in this video. You've got to read it. The boy was brought back to life by Elisha. When Elisha was coming to the house, and listen, the reason I say I don't have time is because I think my phone's going to glitch and shut off for lack of memory. Okay, so when the boy came back to life, is verse 35. Then he returned, Elisha, and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he said to Gehazi, call the Shunammite. He called her in. And when she was come in, he said, take up your son. She went in and fell at his feet, bowed herself to the ground, took up her son and went out. Why did he sneeze seven times? I, I believe it represents the dead in Christ. He was dead. He came back to life. Seven sneezes, the seven periods, the seven letters of the seven churches that represented 2,000 years of church history. The dead in Christ will rise first. We which are alive and remain will be caught up together with them. Now, if you say, well, I don't believe that story has anything to do with the rapture, even though you made all those connections, look at 2 Kings chapter 8. Look at this. Then spoke Elisha to the woman whose son he had restored to life. This is the Shunammite woman saying, arise and go Go you and your household and sojourn wheresoever you can sojourn. Why? For the Lord has called for a famine and it shall also come upon the land for how long? Seven years. So Elisha warns the Shunammite woman, there's a famine coming on the land. Get out of Dodge, go wherever you can for seven years. It's a pre-trib rapture. We are called out seven years of hell on earth, and then we come back. It's an amazing story. And the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God, she arose, she went up, and she went with her household and sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines and she went forth to cry to the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, saying... 
Tell me, I pray you, all the great things that Elisha has done. He wants to hear the stories of the miracles. And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he had restored a dead body to life, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life cried to the king for her house and her land. And Gehazi said, my Lord, O king, this is the woman and this is her son whom Elisha restored to life. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed to her a certain officer saying, restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land even till now. Praise God. This is the story of the rapture. Now let me close it off with this theory. Is the time of life the reference to the first day of creation? The fifth day of creation when the word life was used in the Bible for the first time. The word life, the time of life, is when God created all the sea life and all the bird life. That's Genesis 1.20. Or is it the sixth day which is when he breathed into Adam and gave man life. So Adam would have told that story all through his 930 years that he lived. Hey, God created me on the sixth day. He's telling the story. Moses didn't write Genesis till 25 year, 2,500 years into human history. These stories were passed down by word of mouth. So at the appointed time in the time of life, is it the first day of creation that God's going to use for the rapture day? Maybe 9-11, because we're not sure of that first day. Is it the fifth day? Is it the sixth day? This is the mystery. Now, in a crazy, on my live last night, in a crazy find, we looked up the word Elul. The month of Elul is right before Tishri. Tishri 1 is going to be about September 17th, a Sunday, when the new moon is spotted, Feast of Trumpets. Oh, I got to go back to that too. Praise God. Hosea 5-7. So Elul is before Tishri. We looked up Elul. It's only used one time in the whole Bible. It led us to Nehemiah 6-4. In Nehemiah 6-4, it's nuts. I got to find it. Lord, please don't let this phone click off. Where am I? Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Esther, Nehemiah. Please, Lord. Look at this. Nehemiah 6, 4, the only time Elul's used in the Bible. Yet they set me to four times after this sort. Oh, that ain't the verse. It was 6. Is it? It's six something. Oh, Lord. Oh, I thought I had it memorized. I just learned this. Oh, there it is. It's 615. So the wall was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month Elul in 52 days. So the 25th day in 52 days, 25, 52, 52 backwards is 25. The whole theme of the Shunammite is double, double, double. We are the firstborn, it's double, double inheritance, double blessing, double resting place is literally what Shunammite means. Remember, she's an unnamed woman. Her son is unnamed. This is amazing. So through this find, the 25th of Elul, if you do the calendar, is 9-11. So could the time of life be 9-11, and 9-11 could be the first day of creation, the fifth day of creation, or the sixth day when he created and breathed life into Adam. I don't know. I'm still digging this out. Praise God in heaven. I am telling you, please ask questions. If I left something out of this, which I may have, and you think, oh, wait a second, what about this? I got to ask this question. Please do it. This is amazing. Hosea 5, 
7. Hosea 5, 7. Oh, Hosea 5, 7. What word am I looking up? They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. Listen to this. This is huge. They have dealt treacherously against the Lord, for they have begotten strange children, right? Not the children of the flesh. Now shall a month devour them with their portions. What does that mean? A month shall devour them? Well, look up the word month. By the way, it's 2320. The number for this in the concordance is 2320. Backwards is 2023. It's Kodesh. Kodesh. So do you know what it really means? Look at this. It's going to blow your mind. Look at this. Hosea 5, 7. Now shall a new moon devour them. They shall be destroyed at the time of the new moon. They shall be destroyed at the time of the new moon. That means this feast of trumpets, the sliver of the new moon, is when the tribulation starts because they will be destroyed at the time of the new moon. Did you see that? And the reason I got led to that, 2 Kings 4, I forgot about this part. So the boy died, remember? He laid on his mother's lap until noon and he died. She went up and laid him in the bed of the man of God. She put him in Elisha's chambers and shut the door behind him and went out. She called to her husband and said, send me, I pray you, one of the servants and a donkey that I may run to the man of God. She knew she had to get to Elisha. It's her only chance to make her son alive again. And he said, this is what the father said, verse 23, 2 Kings 4, 23. And he said, Wherefore will you go to him today? It is neither a new moon nor a Sabbath. And she said, it will be well. God threw us a clue that it's not a rapture on Feast of Trumpets because the guy said, the father said, it's not a new moon or a Sabbath. So think about that. Praise God. So I looked up the whole new moon that led us to Hosea 5, 7 that says, they, look at, they shall be destroyed at the time of the new moon. That's Hosea 5, 7. Tribulation will start on the Feast of Trumpets. The United Nations doing the pact, the peace deal, all of it. Praise God. I think I got most everything I wanted out of here. I'm going to keep digging. All glory to God. The rapture is a birth. We're connected to the appointed time of Isaac's birth, the appointed time of the Shunammite woman's son's birth, the seven sneezes, the dead in Christ. It's all there. If you have a legit question, please dig into this study. This is what I do on my lives. I'm on Clapper. Name's the same, Cool Cat 7729 Join me on a live. We go over this stuff all the time. All glory to God.